Hi there, it's March the 12th and today we conclude our journey through the good news of Mark. We're in chapter 16 and we're reading verses 1 to 20. Now the first eight verses of Mark are the ending that is definitely in the original manuscripts. From 8 onward, verses 9 to 20 um, are seem later, seeming to be later additions. We're not quite sure why the Gospel of Mark lost its ending. Some people suggest that the scroll it was written on got cut off, or someone came back later, or Mark came back later to finish it off. But certainly the earliest manuscripts have just up to verse 8, and so it finishes rather abruptly. The women are wanting to come to the tomb. They're wanting to perform the rites of embalming or of spicing Jesus' body uh, in the, along the Jewish tradition. But they realise that they can't open the tomb. The tomb has a great stone. So they ask one another, who's going to roll the stone across? When they come to the tomb, they're shocked and horrified to see that the tomb is open. And there's a young man sitting in the tomb. It's interesting that Mark uses the word neoniskos in Greek, meaning a young man, where others might use angelos, an angel. And uh, this has this has uh, reminiscences of the earlier use of the word young man when he's talking about Jesus being arrested in the garden. But they go in and they see a young man sitting there and the young man says he's he's risen he don't be afraid he's risen he's not here and he says go and tell his disciples so then there is this abrupt ending where it says that the women were afraid they went but they were afraid so then from verse 9 we have kind of the summary of the story of the resurrection which others may take a chapter or two to tell and so Mark is basically telling how the women went, how the men, uh, some didn't believe, but uh, when they heard the women's story, but Jesus appeared. It also has reference to the two on the road to Emmaus, which Luke is going to unpack later in his account of the resurrection. But here it's just a passing reference to two who met Jesus in another form, in another guise. And, uh, and then Jesus calls his disciples together. He meets them all. He... Uh, he gives them his commission to go and to tell the good news. And interestingly, the closing of Mark, the additional closing of Mark, talks about some of the signs that would accompany him. It mentions the gift of tongues, the gift of other tongues. It mentions um, being able to drink poison that would not harm them and to be able to lay hands on the sick. So things that the church later were familiar with and also that the book of Acts clearly refers to in some of the things it's saying. Uh, and then Mark comes to a close, th this this ending of Mark comes to a close with Jesus uh, blessing his disciples, going to sit at the right hand of the Father, and then the good news of Jesus going out into the world. It's in complete agreement with the other Gospels. It's, it, even if it is a later edition, it's in line with the Gospel story. The question of whether it's the original one that Mark wrote or whether he came back and wrote it later is one that scholars still debate to this day. What we can be sure of is that Jesus is alive. Jesus is risen from the dead. He's broken out of the grave. The thing that shocked the women, the thing that caused them such fear and trembling, is the outrageous reality that Jesus is alive today and that he is in the presence of his Father. Mark makes it clear that the place he's gone to is the right hand of his Father, where he still is speaking up for us, where he's still presenting those wounds of Calvary, which show his bride price that is paid. And we are called, we're still called as his followers to carry the good news of reconciliation, to be the vehicles of grace into the world that Jesus needs for us to be in order to see his kingdom established. Have a very good March the 12th.